Photography Part 1. Review this lecture after reading Chapter 1 Photography and Understanding Movies. Use the film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to aid in the note-taking process. Watch the supplemental videos to enhance the lecture. Movies should be treated as text, works to be analyzed and interpreted. They are very similar to any other text, including a textbook. What is style? Consider this question outside of the world of film. Style is not just their clothes, but how they present themselves. A film style is the total package. It's how the film is put together. In this lecture, we'll focus almost exclusively on film's visual presentation. Realism versus formalism. In the textbook, Gianetti begins the photography chapter with the two distinct styles above. Realism and formalism defined. Realism, an attempt to reproduce the natural world with a minimum of distortion. The elements of style don't call attention to themselves. Formalism, stylistically flamboyant. The elements of style call attention to themselves. Pioneers of style. Realism and formalism have existed since the beginning of cinema starting in France in the late 1890s. We have two groups of filmmakers here, Auguste and Louis Lumiere and Georges Méliès. We will analyze still images from both groups of directors to determine who's working within the style of realism and who's working in the style of formalism and why. Analyzing style. The still on the left is taken from a Lumiere Brothers film. It's an image of a train pulling into a station and people standing on a platform watching. The still on the right from George Milliers is a shot of a rocket and women climbing into the rocket ship. Would we classify the still from the Lumiere brothers as realism or formalism? Remember, in last week's lecture, we said that when we view film critically, we tend to have a similar and universal response. The Lumiere brothers established the style of realism with the following criteria. They were recording an actual event using available light, no actors, and no set design. We can trace a line from these early films by the Lumiere brothers to the genre of documentary and fiction films done with a documentary look. Students are encouraged to watch Lumiere brothers films or actualities in the supplemental playlist. Formalism or realism? Let's take a closer look at this image from George Millier's film, A Trip to the Moon, to determine why it's done within the style of formalism. George Millier's establishes the style of formalism with the following criteria. He shot in a studio, using actors, elaborate sets, and special effects. George Millier's film, A Trip to the Moon, helps establish formalism through his storytelling and special effects. An early example of using film to tell a story, also known as a fictional narrative, creates an early example of what becomes the science fiction genre of film. Students are encouraged to watch this important film on YouTube, and there's a still image of the moon with a rocket ship 
in its eye from the 1902 film. This is a recreation of a chart from the textbook. In the middle, we have classicalism and underneath it, fiction. Classicalism would be a conventional Hollywood film. As we move further away from classicalism, we move towards realism or formalism. It says here that documentary is the most extreme form of realism. And avant-garde, which we explored last week, is the most extreme form of formalism. Three types of film, documentary or nonfiction, fiction or fictional narratives, and avant-garde or non-narrative. Consider the distinction among the three principal styles of film and how the style affects the presentation of the story or material. And we did take a really close look at avant-garde in week one, and I hope that really helped for you to understand what to expect out of a documentary, a fictional narrative, and an avant-garde style film. Now that we have a basic understanding of the origins of realism and formalism, let's compare the following images to determine which is done within the style of realism and formalism and why. So whenever you're gonna do an analysis, you need a set of criteria. So consider the following elements of style. The lighting, the character's appearance, their pose, the costumes, the presence or absence of any special effects or CGI, and then where the action is taking place. Which still is done within the style of realism or formalism? On the left, we have a still from the movie Kids, and on the right, we have a still from the movie Blade Runner. Consider their criteria presented in the last slide when you make your determination. And here we have the still from the movie Kids. Based on the criteria, this still is done within the style of realism. The visual style reflects the natural world. The elements of style don't call attention to themselves. We have a casual pose, we have naturalistic looking hair and very little makeup, and the setting looks like it's in a classroom or somewhere with a bulletin board. And then that white square around her head is another nod to realism because that's letting us know that she is being filmed and she knows that she's being filmed. We have the still from Blade Runner here. Based on their criteria, this still is done within the style of formalism. It's stylistically flamboyant. The elements of style call attention to themselves. We have very dramatic lighting. We have a special effect with the smoke suspended in the air and extremely elaborate hair and makeup. Cinematographer. The cinematographer or the director of photography, often abbreviated DP, works closely with the director. She's in control of the film's photography and lighting. Cinematographers use the camera to convey meaning, mood, dramatic tone, and other visual subtext. Visual, what is shown to the audience. Subtext, messages or information communicated non-verbally. Next time you watch a film, pay attention to the visual clues. A storyboard, a graphic representation of each shot in a scene, hand-drawn or computer-generated. Cinematographers use storyboards to plot out the shots before the camera even rolls. On the left, we have a very detailed storyboard from the movie Rambo 3. Storyboards include the following information, the photographic composition, 
the action taking place within the shot, the camera movement, and sometimes even dialogue. Shot sizes, here's a much less detailed storyboard. A shot size or shot selection is defined by the amount of the subject matter that's included within the frame of the screen. They're the building blocks of film. Let's begin with an extreme close-up. You'll see the abbreviation there next to the name of the shot. And below we have a still from the movie Citizen Kane, which shows one object very tightly framed. The composition tells us exactly where to look. This man has something important to say. A close-up. This is an intimate composition. A close-up typically shows us one subject or object. Every picture tells a story. Based on the visual subtext, is this a good guy or a bad guy? Bad guy, right? Medium shot. Medium shots are very common. They provide more background information than our previous shots. A medium shot typically shows a subject or subject from the waist, hips, or knees up. It allows more than one subject to be shown. If we navigate this image from La Ventura here in depth, we can come to the conclusion that the woman is the focal point in this composition. Long shot. This is the first shot where the human subject isn't the largest. A long shot is less intimate than the prior shots. We read images from left to right. First we look at the water, the sky, the mountains, and finally the man. The setting is the focal point in this composition. Did you know the rule of thirds is used when composing shots. It breaks up the frame into three vertical parts. By putting the man in the final third of the frame, our eyes rest on him last. Extreme long shot. Films often begin with an extreme long shot of a location. This is called an establishing shot. This extreme long shot establishes the location. What do you think of when you see rural, cold, isolated, and mountainous? Based on the setting, we can make assumptions on the type of film this may be. Another example of an extreme long shot from the movie Dr. Strangelove. This extreme long shot is not an establishing shot. The intimacy is weakened because of the distance between the subjects and the viewer. A point of view shot or POV shot, looking at this image from The Shining. This shot selection provides a shift in perspective. It represents what the character sees. We can take a look at how we can put this point of view shot in action and you'll see a very common editing technique that we call shot reverse shot. It presents a close-up, so in this instance, we get a close-up of Danny's face, and then it cuts to a point of view shot. We see what Danny is looking at and his response. Over-the-shoulder shot. An over-the-shoulder shot is used often in editing. This shot selection shows a man's face over a woman's shoulder. It's very common to cut back and forth over the subject's shoulders to create a conversation. Lighting and film noir. The cinematographer also creates and controls the quality of a film's lighting. We'll begin with a basic three-point lighting plot. Three-point lighting, three basic placements for lights. Each light is named for its function within the shot. Three-point light names. Key light provides the most light. Fill light used to create shadows. Backlight bumps objects and subjects out from the background. 
Lighting diagram. A lighting plot is created for each shot. It works in conjunction with the storyboard. Here's an overhead lighting diagram. We see the camera, the subject, the key light, the fill light, and the backlight. Realism in lighting. Films done within the style of realism tend to use light more conservatively. Natural or available lighting goes all the way back to the Lumiere brothers. Typically, the lighting does not call attention to itself. Formalism in lighting. Films done within the style of formalism often use dramatic lighting. The lighting often calls attention to itself. It communicates information to the viewer, visual subtext, establishes a mood or an atmosphere. High and low key lighting plots refers to the contrast of the image. Contrast, the range of tones between pure white and pure black. High key lighting. High key lighting creates an evenly lit scene may have a glossy or glamorous look. Low key lighting creates a sense of danger, mystery, or suspense, creates a high contrast image. Critical analysis. Let's spend some time comparing high and low key images. Consider whether the lighting is being used to communicate visual subtext by creating a mood or an atmosphere. High key lighting on the left, an evenly lit scene with low contrast. Low key lighting on the right, high contrast areas of light and dark. Low key lighting on the left and high key lighting on the right. Which lighting plot creates a sense of danger or suspense? What types of films use high and low key lighting? Low key lighting is associated with horror, suspense, mystery, and thriller genres. High key lighting is associated with classical Hollywood films such as romantic comedies, musicals, and comedies. The style of film that we'll be exploring this week is film noir, French for dark or black cinema coined by a group of French film critics to a group or collection of Hollywood films after World War II. Film noir style, a specific period in American film history, beginning in the 1940s and ending in the late 1950s. Film noir refers to a film's style and not its genre, Literary influences come from pulp fiction novels. Films made with film noir style after 1959 are called neo-noirs. Examples, Sin City and L.A. Confidential. Origins of film noir. Visual style came from German expressionist cinema of the 1920s and early 1930s. Influence of horror. Techniques also used in American horror films of the 1930s, like Dracula and Frankenstein. Visual characteristics of film noir. Low-key lighting, ominous shadows, smoke, off-balance camera angles. Plot elements in film noir. Voiceover narration, nonlinear plot structure, flashbacks, sharp wit, and biting sarcasm. Characters in film noir, an anti-hero protagonist who's cynical and morally ambiguous, and a femme fatale who's seductive, manipulative, and sometimes murderous. Themes in film noir include cynicism, moral conflict, pessimism, disillusionment, and paranoia. This week's assigned film is Sunset Boulevard, released in 1950, directed by Billy Wilder, with William Holden as Joe Gillis and Gloria Swanson as Norma Desmond.
Since Sunset Boulevard is our first assigned film, we have our first response paper assignment. Before you answer one of the following questions, be sure to review all of the support materials in the module on D2L. These are critical essays and careful instructions are given on D2L. Question one, in what ways might the character of Joe Gillis be considered an anti-hero? Since this is an open-ended question, in the introduction to your paper, you must make a definitive claim to either support or deny Joe's anti-hero status, and then support that claim with evidence in the body of your paper. Question two, why is Sunset Boulevard considered a film noir? Believe it or not, there's not one clear definition of the style, so please be sure to use the information about film noir from the lecture to support your claim. Films featured in this lecture, students are encouraged to explore these films. You can pull up the PDF version of this lecture on D2L to take a closer look. I thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a productive week.